All right. Now we're finally at the fun stuff. The the fun, 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 happy fun stuff. So we're doing all the manga stuff. So this is the hottest new manga recommendations in 2024. It's from Sufferance. I have done some videos of him before. So this is not one brand new of the wazoo. I try to look for more newer person, new, newer anime uh recommendators in that sense to give them a, some shine so people can be exposed to their work uh i don't mind going for the big guys too but like sometimes i actually prefer more littler guys someone in the thousands range hundreds range six thousand range whatever the case may be something somewhere in the more smaller range hundred thousand eh, but then again the smaller guys are what i'm actually looking for in most cases so with that said like subscribe share everyone comment and we're gonna get into this I have enjoyed them. Some good, some bad, but overall, I can't complain. The ones that I have for you today are very new, very refreshing, very different, actually. So I think you will be pleasantly surprised and definitely worth your time to learn about. The first one is Centuria, and this story surprised me because it's done by an assistant of Tatsuki Fujimoto. Yes, another one of those situations where Fujimoto's assistants go on to create very reputable and successful stories. This, potentially, could be another one of those situations. I don't know how or why coming in contact with Fujimoto makes it possible for you to do it, but it happens. And here we are with one of his newest ones, coming from Chainsaw Man Part 2, I believe. Centuria gives me heavy Vinland Saga vibes, but like the second half of the story story where Thorfinn is trying to reclaim kind of his humanity and being a pacifist in a world of disgusting horrible activity. That might turn you off but just hear me out for a moment. Centuria focuses on a character known as Julian who is kind of like a young teenage boy, has known the hardships of this 16th century-esque world, you know, think Vikings and knights etc. Brutal, disgusting, horrible living. He is a slave and he jumps on a ship with a hundred other slaves going towards a new continent looking for a better life. Julian knows no compassion, no friendship, no kindness. He's only ever known hurt and pain. But the slaves on these boat actually show him a good time. They treat him well. They treat him like one of their own. And over this short trip, he becomes very close with a woman known as Mira who becomes a motherly figure towards him. Something he's never had before and it's very personal and emotionally taxing thinking about his own mother who sold him off as a slave to begin with. So he gets close with all of these people and this new motherly figure, but something horrendous happens. Actually, how do I sign that? The quote-unquote owner of the slaves isn't actually going to use them, he just wants to kill them and claim the insurance on their bodies. So he plans to dump them at sea next to this very mysterious zone of water. Think of it like the Bermuda Triangle, no ship, no person, no pirate, no warlord wants to set foot or boat or sail into this vicinity of water. So it happens. All of these slaves start to get killed and dumped into the water and the last people that remain is Julian and Mira who is heavily pregnant. Dumping on these bodies would call upon an eldritch being, this horrifying cosmic creature out of the depths of the ocean symbolized by the sea life looking like an octopus, squid, mutation, hybrid thing, speaking to Julie in a mirror. It offers them a wish, but to grant it, you have to fulfill two things. The first is a large quantity of sacrifices, which is what the slaves were. The second is something personal. Julian originally gives up his life for Mira and her child to live forward with this newfound wish, but because of past personal experiences that Mira has had with her previous child being the same age as Julian and losing him before, she doesn't want the same outcome to happen. So she sacrifices her own life, very noble, very kind, caring, and just sacrificial. It's sad rips out her own child prematurely, now known as Diana, and gives her to Julian to take care of as she plunges off into the sea. This fulfills the wish, and Julian gets it granted. What he wishes for is kind of the strength and power to find the best within humanity. Not for himself, but just for life in general, that he wishes within this cruel world that there is still can be good people. This being grants the ability to find that. So Julian would inherit all a hundred slaves' power. Cram them all together, they're now inside of Julian, their strength, speed, intelligence, abilities, whatever it may be. That also 
means that he has a hundred lives. On top of it, he also has a bit of cosmic abilities, a little bit supernatural, a little bit spooky, and he uses these newfound abilities to decimate everyone on this ship, leaving no survivors whatsoever. And what you get is him on a little boat with his brand new child called Diana that he's now taking care of, going towards a unknown continent with mysterious lurking figures following him, a weird sense of horror in the background, and just a disgusting world that he's trying to find the best within. This story is very early, it has a handful of chapters, but each week I'm constantly interested to see where it goes and what it does. It does remind me heavily of Vinland Saga, but a little bit more gritty, a little bit more edgy. It doesn't fully go down this pacifistic route because the world is so constantly, consistently disgusting, and Julian needs to defend himself and Diana. He's very introspective as a person, constantly learning, and I love characters like this. It's entertaining, it's fun, it's very personal, and I think a lot of you will really enjoy it. But a lot of you might want something a little bit simpler. This is Astro Royale. It's by the same author that done Tokyo Revengers. And but yeah, hold on before you skip, right? I understand the legacy of TR. I know it was very well received at one point and then instantly hated towards the end. I personally haven't read it. I can't comment on that. If you like it, hate it, whatever it may be, so be it. But this is a pretty big story for a lot of reasons. One, TR was massive within a completely different magazine, so they kind of got poached and now are within Weekly Shonen Jump. Big thing. They they also had a opposite reception of Kagurabachi. That story was memed heavily in a good way before its release. Astro Royale was memed in a bad way. However, the story isn't actually that bad. Funny enough, I enjoy it. It feels like prime weekly shonen jump. Not new or revolutionary, but something familiar and grounded with that sprinkle of fantasy or superpowers that you need to kind of compete with everything else. Astro Royale is comfortable for the author. It is about gangs once again. It starts with the passing of a young boy's father. Kind of like this gang leader. He'd done well within the community. He looked out for everyone and he was a strong, independent fella. He also has a bunch of children. He has one legitimate son, which is the main character, and about 12 others that he's taken in. On his deathbed, all of his children are fighting for his legacy. They want to be the next leader, the next boss, the next big man. But it falls into the main character, legitimate child's hands, to take the gang into the future. A meteor would crash down and bestow people with special abilities. The main character gets a very powerful arm that punches like a bullet and it's meant to be the strongest punch. All of the children also get special abilities. So now our main character, his stepbrother, who's like his right hand man, have to work together to fight all the other children that want to become the head of the family. Now this might sound really simple, and truth be told, it is. But it has a lot going for it. These stories are really addicting because there's so much you can just add on to it within a moment's notice. It's a really solid, simple foundation that has a bunch of building blocks that you can just keep adding on consistently every single week, whether it be for characters, whether it be for powers, whether it be for, you know, expanding the family or whatever it may be. So there's a lot going into this. And I think the reception in Japan so far has been really good. I think everywhere else, a little bit mixed. It's going to take time for people to warm up to this story, I think, because it is just Tokyo Revenge with superpowers. It doesn't have to be the next big thing, it doesn't have to be revolutionary, it just has to tell its story well. And so far it is doing that. It is a little early however, and Jump are very quick to axe things. But what you should actually be curious about is this final story, because it is very, very different. Different is good. This is Enkoku Delta, and to describe this story is a little bit difficult, but I'll try my best. Human world, normal. There's another world called Delta. It's like a separate dimension, runs parallel with the human world. Not normal. Bunch of weird, creative individuals that live within here. They're kind of humanoid, but then there's like dog creatures and they're like cyborgs. Whoa, All of these weird. Oh, different. What the hell? That's a different type of arso. Just to let you guys know, for those who are watching, 
I'm not just doing artwork. I'm also doing reactions alongside my audience. So if you want to watch what we're watching alongside my artwork, because my artwork's still up there, you just won't be seeing my big old hand on the screen. So if you want to watch with us and hear the recommendations of anime that might pique your interest with alongside my artwork on the side, that might be something that you really would enjoy. But if you don't care about that, you can stay over there on TikTok. There's no pressure. You don't have to go over here. I'm just giving you the option. You can watch from YouTube, Twitch, Trovo, Kick, or whatever. The only difference is you won't be able to see it from TikTok because TikTok is a pansy. And I don't trust TikTok like that because certain words just upset this fucking thing. So, like, might as well come over here on TikTok, YouTube, Twitch. I mean, YouTube, Twitch, Trovo, Kick, whatever you want to choose, it's there so you can hear the recommendations. Uh, mine is easy to remember, but... Uh, uh, so yeah contraption mishmashes of different identities and cultures and ideas etc right very interesting this world known as delta functions of the human world they steal the life force of people you can do this partially like a little sip you can have a big gulp and you can actually kill people the human world know about delta they actually work hand in hand so the human world can supply things to delta and delta supplies things back the citizens of Delta can't actually go into the human world without a skin suit, so there's a bit of a barrier of entry. If they don't wear a skin suit, they evaporate and die. There is another dimension we know nothing about that are here to destroy Delta. They have a grudge. It's a very T-like organization. But to get to Delta, they have to go through the human world. So they're going to start causing chaos within there in hopes for Delta to come in and try and save the situation or at least observe what is going on. Our main character is a very airhead woman, kind of just going about her day, doing her jobs. She likes traveling to the human world to interact with people. And she reminds me a lot of Power from Chainsaw Man. Same vibe, same personality. So the political drama and warfare that's currently going down is about to wrap up our main character and all of these dimensions at once. I don't know if I've done a good job explaining that, but it's fun, it's interesting, it's new, I enjoy it. I think it's something different, like I said, and different is good. I think there's a solid story to be had here though. It's taking its time, that's for sure, to build it up politically, but character-wise, there's so much uniqueness within here. Every character looks so entirely different, every design, every mindset, just refreshing. I'm curious to see how the main character gets involved in all of this drama because they're just a small fry in this much bigger packet of chips and there's a lot of great directions that I believe it can go within. This story has a lot of chances to be really successful and enjoyed by a lot of people. So if it sounds interesting, I think you should give it a chance. But that does go for all of the stories that I've talked about today. They all offer something very different, very valuable, and therefore, in my opinion, are all kind of worth your time. Welcome to the end of the video if you've made it this far, thank you, I appreciate it, why not leave a like and subscribe, that'd be nice. Also, check out some of these videos here, the more you watch, the more YouTube recommends me and that supports me, I'd appreciate that, and you'll probably enjoy the video. If any of these stories sound interesting, or if you've read them already, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And with that, I will see you all later. Grammarly has been all a right, huge help so in that helping was me sufferance get- with, Sufferance with the whole recommendation. Some of them look really interesting. I actually would like to read them. But with that said, like, share, follow, comment, give a follow to Sufferance and, and his great work. And I'll see you guys in the next one.